Hero helps out. The engines on the island of Sodor like to be busy. They heave and haul. They huff and puff. And most of all, they like to please Sir Topham Hatt. One morning, Hero chuffed into Knapford Station. There was hustle and bustle, noise and steam. It was another busy day at Knapford. Then Sir Topham Hatt hurried onto the platform without his hat. Hero gasped. <gasps> sir, good morning, sir. I hope the day finds you well, sir. The day finds me with much too much to do, Hero. That's how the day finds me. I can see, sir. What are you staring at, Hero? Nothing, sir. Just your hat, sir. Excuse me. Edward puffed in. Hello, Hero. You look worried. Not at all. Then there was trouble. Blistering boilers. In all my long years, I've never seen that before. <clears throat> Hero was worried for Sir Topham Hatt. Sir, can I help you, sir? It's a very busy day, Hero. I have to visit the Thin Controller. I must talk with him about the railways. Hero knew this was important. I understand, sir. I must be away from Knapford. Of course, sir. Now, Edward was worried. Sir? Not now, Edward. Edward was still worried. I have to pick up visitors from Brendam Docks. I don't know where to take them. Hero didn't know where the visitors should go either. But he didn't want to bother Sir Topham Hatt. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Take them to the hills, Edward. They will enjoy the hills. So, Edward puffed away to Brendam Docks and the hills. Hero felt happy. He was master of the railway, as he liked to be. Hero puffed up to the water tower. Thomas was there. He was taking on water. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. Where are you going, Thomas? To Knapford. I must ask Sir Topham Hatt where to take these crates of benches and tables. Hero still didn't want to bother Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt is busy now, Thomas. He will tell you where to go later. You have time to visit your friend, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hero was happy. He was helping Sir Topham Hatt. Hero steamed up to a junction. Percy was there. He had a flatbed full of quacking ducks. Hello, Percy. How are you? Percy was worried. Hello, Hero. These ducks are very noisy. They want to go swimming. I have to find Sir Topham Hatt. He will tell me where I must take them for a swim. Hero still didn't want to bother Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt is very busy, Percy. Perhaps you could puff to the Finland. The ducks will be happy there. Thank you, Hero. Hero was happy. Helping Sir Topham Hatt was the best job he had ever had. Hero huffed happily to a crossing. Sir Topham Hatt was there. Hero, while I was with the Thin Controller, I heard worrying news. 
Farmer McCall is waiting for his ducks. There are no tables or benches for the concert at tea time. And Edward is late for a concert at the town hall. <gasps> Hero gasped. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Sir Topham Hatt was cross with him. And it was all his fault. Hero felt worse than ever. He had been master of the railway. And now he was master of the muddle. I'm sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. I knew you were very busy. I wanted to help, so I told the engines what to do. I didn't want to bother you, sir. <gasps> Sir Topham Hatt gasped. You didn't want to bother me. I am controller of the railway. Nothing is more important to me than my engines being really useful. Hero gulped. I know that now, sir. I'm not master of the railway. I'm master of the muddle. I can put this right. Please give me time. And Hero wished quickly away. Hero found Edward in the hills. Hello, Hero. My visitors are very happy. Good, Edward. But now, you must take the visitors to Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hutt will give you your orders. I thought we weren't to bother Sir Topham Hatt, Hero. I was wrong, Edward. Sir Topham Hutt didn't want that at all. And Hero steamed swiftly away. Hero whooshed up to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. I'm having a wonderful time with the piglets. Good, Thomas, my friend. But now, you must puff as fast as you can to Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt is waiting with orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother Sir Topham Hatt, Hero. I was wrong, Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt didn't want that at all. Bye, Hero. Hero clickety-clacked onto the Fenland track. Percy was there. The ducks were swimming happily. Hello, Percy. Hello, Hero. The ducks are very happy. I'm pleased to hear that, Percy. But now, you must take the ducks to Knopfoot. Sir Topham Hatt has orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother Sir Topham Hatt. I was wrong, Percy. Sir Topham Hatt didn't want that at all. But how can I get the ducks back into their crates? I will help you, Percy. Hero blew his whistle. It sounded like a duck quacking. The ducks flapped and flew into their crates. Thank you, Hero. Later, Sir Topham Hatt had given his orders to the engines. Now, you all know what you have to do. Chuff away and be really useful. Hero puffed forward. And what shall I do, sir? You, Hero, will do what you have always done. You will be helpful, Hero. Helping me. And nothing could have made Hero happier. Toby's new whistle. It was a bright sunny day on the island of Soda. All the engines chuffed cheerfully. Everyone was smiling. Everyone except Toby. Toby was at the steamworks. Toby's bell had stopped working. It was covered in rust and it didn't clang and chime anymore. It had to stay in the steamworks to be cleaned. So Toby was very sad. Victor didn't have another bell for Toby, so he had to be fitted with a new steam whistle. Easy does it, Kevin, my friend. Left a little? No. Right a little? Perfect. Very good, my friend. How does that feel, Toby? Toby thought the new whistle felt very strange. It was much bigger than his old bell. He was worried. I've never used a steam whistle before. James chuffed into the steamworks with Sir Topham Hatt. Hello, Toby. That's a three-chime steam whistle. I used to have one of those. 
This made Toby even more worried. Is it a good whistle? It's the best. It is the loudest whistle in the whole of Sodor. The loudest? Yes, it's loud and booming. Everyone will hear you coming. Toby didn't like this. He didn't like loud and booming noises. He liked the tingling-a-ling of his old bell. Toby, you must go to Knapford and collect Lady Hat. She is waiting, so don't be late. Yes, sir. So Toby chuffed off to Knapford Station with his new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my old bell back. I don't know how to use this new loud and booming three-chime steam whistle. Then an idea flew into Toby's funnel. If I puff slowly and carefully, I won't need to use my whistle at all. I can do all my jobs and wait for my old bell to be fixed. This made Toby feel much happier. Toby steamed slowly through Sodor. Gordon huffed and puffed impatiently behind him. Out of my way, Toby, you old steam tram. You're making me late. Later, some cows were on the tracks in front of Toby. He couldn't puff past them. Go away, cows, please. I need to chuff through. But the cows didn't take any notice of Toby. They didn't move. They were too busy mooing and chewing. Toby knew what he needed to do. He needed to blow his new steam whistle. But Toby was scared. I don't want to use this new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my little bell back. Then another idea flew into Toby's funnel. I know what I can do. I'll get help. So Toby reversed down the track to find help. Some farm workers were working in the field. Excuse me. Hello? Hello? The farm workers didn't hear Toby. Toby blew steam and rattled his rods. But the farm workers still didn't hear Toby. They were too far away. Bust my buffers. They can't hear me. Toby knew he should use his new steam whistle. But he was still too scared. I wish I had my little bell back. So Toby puffed on. Somewhere he had to find help. But Toby couldn't find anybody to help him. So he huffed back to the cows. I do hope the cows have gone back to their field now. But the cows hadn't gone back to their field. They were still mooing and chewing all over the tracks. Oh, no! Toby tried to biff them with his cow catcher, but they still wouldn't move. Oh, no, Henrietta. I think we're trapped. <gasps> Then there was trouble. Toby heard a noise that made his wheels wobble. Another engine is coming. They'll crash into the cows. The engine steamed around the corner. It was Thomas. Thomas was racing like the wind. His firebox was fuming, and his boiler was burning brightly. I have to tell Thomas about the cows. I'll have to use this new whistle. Toby closed his eyes. His firebox flared. Steam blew into his new three-chime steam whistle. It was the loudest whistle anyone had ever heard on Sodor. What was that? It was a three-chime steam whistle. They're the best whistles ever. I wonder who blew that? Thomas heard the three-chime steam whistle. Cinders and ashes, I must stop. He applied his brakes. Thomas screeched and skidded. Sparks flew and tracks trembled. Toby didn't dare look. Phew! Thank you, Toby. Your whistle told me there was trouble ahead. Toby felt very proud. I'm pleased I used my three-chime steam whistle. 
It was even louder than my bell. Thomas was proud of his friend Toby. Together, with their whistles and wish, Toby and Thomas moved the cows from the track. Then, Toby remembered Lady Hat. Fizzling fireboxes. I've forgotten all about Lady Hat. She's waiting for me at Knapford. I must puff faster than Gordon to chuff there on time. Don't worry, Toby. I'll puff with you. We're sure to make it together. Thomas and Toby puffed and puffed toward Knapford Station. Suddenly, Sir Topham had arrived. He was very cross. Toby, Lady Hat waited for a very long time. Now Gordon is taking her home. Toby was upset. He knew he hadn't been a really useful engine. I'm sorry, sir. Then, Toby stopped. He saw something ahead. There's a fallen tree across the tracks. And Gordon is steaming straight towards it. Oh, no! Don't worry, sir. I know just what to do. Toby bubbled his boiler and pumped his pistons. He blew his three chimes steam whistle as loudly and as boomingly as he could. Gordon heard Toby's whistle. He applied his brakes and screeched to a halt. Toby, did you blow that whistle so loudly? Yes, I did. It was my new three-chime steam whistle. For a steam tram, you have a lot of puff. Thank you. Well done, Toby. Toby couldn't have felt more proud. Good job, Toby. Toby was back at the steamworks. His little bell was ready. It glistened and gleamed as if it were brand new. Toby was happy. Bye-bye, big new steam whistle. Victor and Kevin had heard the news that Toby had saved Thomas and Gordon. Well, Toby, my friend, it sounds as if you had a very busy day. Did you like the new three-chime steam whistle? It was very useful. You can keep it if you like, my friend. No, thank you. My bell is the best of all. <laughs> Thomas and the Runaway Kite. It was a bright blue morning on the island of Sodor. It was the day of the Sodor Kite Festival. Soon the sky would be full of kites of all shapes and colors. The engines were very excited about the kite festival. Thomas was the most excited of all because Thomas liked kites best of all. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He had a very special special. He was to collect the winner's cup for the kite festival. Thomas gasped when he saw the cup. Oh my, that's the most beautiful cup I've ever seen. Thomas, you must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Lady Hat will give it to the winner at tea time. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. I will chuff straight there. Thomas puffed proudly. He wanted everyone to see that he was pulling the winner's cup. Thomas pulled up to a junction. High in the sky, above the treetops, he saw a kite. Fizzling fireboxes. What a wonderful kite. I hope I will see it again. Thomas huffed and chuffed to the top of Gordon's Hill. Then he gasped. There's that wonderful kite again. The kite belonged to Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. <laughs> they wanted to win the cup at the kite festival. Charlie puffed up. Look at that kite swoop through the air. Look, there's Thomas. Suddenly, a gust of wind pulled at the kite. The kite flew up, 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 and away. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren watched. They were very sad. Thomas wanted to help them. Don't be sad. I'll chase after your kite and bring it back to you. This made the children very happy. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can catch up with your kite. I'll help you, Thomas. No, thank you, Charlie. I'm much faster than you. I can chase this kite all by myself. 
So, Thomas didn't go straight to Knapford with the Winner's Cup. He chuffed off, chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's runaway kite. The wind blew the kite far down the tracks. Thomas whooshed and whooshed. His boiler bubbled. His coal crackled. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then, the wind blew the kite out of sight. Where has the kite gone? Hello, Thomas. You're huffing hard. Hello, Edward. I'm chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. How exciting. Can I help? No, thank you, Edward. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase their kite all by myself. At last, Thomas caught up with the kite. He was excited. Then, the wind blew the kite another way. Cinders and ashes, come back, Mr. Kite, please! Thomas chased and raced. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then, the wind blew the kite up over the bridge. Emily was on the bridge. She saw the kite. She was surprised. Hello, Thomas. Are you chasing that kite? Yes, Emily. It is blown away from Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. I've promised I'll catch it. Can I help? No, thank you, Emily. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase it all by myself. And Thomas whooshed on under the bridge. Thomas clattered and clacked. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. What's wrong, Thomas? Your cheeks are as red as James's boiler. I'm chasing that kite. Let me help. I can chase it with you. No, thank you. I can chase this kite all by myself. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. So, Percy chuffed off. And Thomas puffed on. At last, the wind dropped. The kite landed in front of Thomas near a junction. Thomas was pleased. Bubbling boilers, I've caught up with you now, Mr. Kite. Thomas whooshed across the junction towards the kite. Then there was trouble. Thomas started juddering and jittering. The flame in Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzled out. Thomas had burned all his coal chasing the runaway kite. Oh my, oh no, I've run out of coal. Then the wind blew again. The kite flew high in the sky and was gone. I can't puff anymore. I can't chase the kite. I'm not the fastest engine on Sodor. I've broken my promise to the children and I haven't delivered the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Thomas felt terrible. It's all my fault. Suddenly, Thomas heard an engine chuffing around the corner. It was Charlie. What's wrong, Thomas? I ran out of coal trying to chase the kite. I thought you were the fastest engine on Sodor. I'm not. I was silly to think I could catch the kite on my own. Will you help me, Charlie? Of course I will, Thomas. Charlie gave Thomas some of his coal. Soon, Thomas's firebox was burning brightly. Thank you, Charlie. I'm late. I must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Can you look for the kite, please? With all my huff and chuff, Thomas. So, Thomas puffed to Knapford with the winner's cup. On his way to Knapford, Thomas stopped at a junction. Percy, Emily, and Edward were waiting. You look sad, Thomas. I didn't catch Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. Will you all help me? Of course we will, Thomas. Right away. 
with no delay. Thomas's friends were happy to help him, and Thomas was happy to be helped. Thomas arrived at Matford Station with the Winner's Cup. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren raced over. Hi, Thomas. They hoped Thomas had found their kite. I haven't found your kite, but all my friends are looking for it now. Come with me. So the children climbed cheerfully on board. Thomas puffed to a junction. Suddenly, the kite flew in front of Thomas. There's the kite. Emily, Percy, Edward, and Charlie chuffed to the junction. The kite danced between them. Then it caught its tail on the signal. Hooray! We've caught the kite! The engines tooted, the children cheered. <laughs> With the help of my friends, we caught the kite. And later that day, at the kite festival, Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite danced best of all, as the wind blew it high up in the sky. And Thomas smiled and smiled. The biggest present of all. For all the engines on the island of Sodor, there are jobs to be done, visitors to meet, and friends to greet. One day, there was a very special friend to greet. Hero was coming back to Sodor. He was to help with the summer visitors. Thomas and Percy waited for him at Brendam Docks. I'm so excited, my firebox is fizzing. And my boiler is bubbling. Hero, our special friend, is coming back to Sodor. Hello, my good friends. I have missed you. We missed you too, Hero. The three engines tooted and hooted with happiness. Welcome back, Hero. First, you must go to the steamworks. Victor will check your engine after your long journey. Of course, sir. Every day, I want to be a really useful engine. Then, you must go to Knapford Station. I will meet you there. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Hero puffed proudly away. I want there to be a welcome party for Hero at Knapford. Percy, you must collect Lady Hat and bring her to the party. Thomas, you must tell the engines to chuff quickly to Knapford for the party. Then Sir Topham had left. Thomas and Percy were excited. Oh my, a welcome party will make Hero very happy. A welcome present would make Hero even happier. That's a good idea. I must go now, Thomas. Lady Hat will be waiting. Then Thomas steamed slowly away. I'm sure I'll find something special for Hero. I'll look as I puff round the island, telling my friends about the party. Thomas clickety-clacked along the track. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at Farmer McCall's farm. So, Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to Farmer McCall's farm. Emily was there. She was collecting straw. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's exciting. Good luck, Thomas. Emily puffed away. Thomas didn't tell her about the party at Knapford. He was too busy looking for a welcome present. Thomas saw the big brown barn. Perhaps Hero would like a barn. He could keep special things safe in a barn. But the barn is too big. And Thomas steamed slowly away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then, another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at the quarry. So, Thomas huffed happily to the quarry. 
Mavis, James, Toby, and Henry were there. They were busy shunting slate cars. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Henry, James, and Toby chuffed away to shunt freight cars. Thomas didn't tell them about the party at Knapford. Thomas looked all around the quarry, but all he could see was Sodor Slate. Slate is very special to Sodor, but Slate is too small to be a present. I must look for something else. So Thomas chuffed away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then Thomas gasped. The steam works. I'm sure there'll be something special there. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully to the steam works. Hello, Kevin. I'm looking for a welcome present for Hero. It has to be something special. Thomas saw an old bell. I'm sure Hero would like a bell. Then everyone would hear him coming. Good idea, Thomas. Good idea. But when Kevin picked up the bell, it clanged and clanked. It rang and rattled. Trembling tracks. That's too noisy. Hero will soon be at Knapford to see Sir Topham Hatt. Bust my buffers. I must hurry. Thomas raced out of the steamworks. He didn't tell Victor and Kevin about the party either. Thomas raced into Knapford Station. Hero was waiting, all alone. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes! I haven't found a welcome present for Hero, and I haven't told anyone about the party. This won't make Hero happy. Thomas felt terrible. Then his boiler bubbled. And his wheels whirred. Hello, hero. Goodbye, hero. And Thomas steamed swiftly out of the station. Thomas puffed to Farmer McColls. Emily, chuff as fast as you can to Knapford. Sir Topham Hat is having a welcome party for Hero. Tell everyone you pass. Thomas, I've had a marvelous idea for a special present for Hero. I'm sure he would like a bright, shiny dome. Victor must have one. Thomas was stern. Thank you, Emily. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Mavis, Toby, James, and Henry were still at the quarry. You must all chuff to Knapford as fast as you can for Hero's welcome party. Thomas, I think I know exactly what Hero would like as a special present. A new glowing lamp. That would be very special. Thomas was firm. Thank you, Henry. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas steamed swiftly away to the steamworks. Kevin, please tell all the engines to race to Knapford for Hero's party. My friend, Kevin and I have been thinking. What about a new shiny buffer for Hero? I think Hero would find that very special. Don't you think so, boss? Uh, Thomas? Thomas knew what he thought. I think now is not the time to find presents. Thank you, but you must tell the engines to hurry, please. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Thomas clickety clacked down the track this way and that, telling his friends all about the party. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. His face was red and his firebox glowed. Thomas, where have you been? Hero's welcome party is almost over. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to find you a welcome present, Hero. Something special from Sodor. But I couldn't find anything. I'm sorry. Hero smiled. Thomas, my friend. You must not worry. My welcome present is right here. Being with my friends is the biggest present of all. And the most special present from Sodor. There is nothing more special. Then Thomas smiled and smiled. He knew Hero was right. 
And so did all his friends. Double trouble. All the engines were very excited. They chuffed cheerfully and chattered as they clattered along the tracks. Today was Sir Topham Hatt's birthday, and there was to be the grandest birthday party on Sodor. Thomas had a very special special. He was to pick up Sir Topham Hatt and Lady Hatt for the party. As Thomas approached Maithwaite Station, he gasped. Ahead, he could see Sir Topham Hatt already on the platform. Cinders and ashes, I must be late. Thomas pulled into the station. He was worried. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was early. Sir Topham Hatt turned around. Thomas gasped. <gasps> sir Topham Hatt had a mustache. Thomas was so surprised he nearly popped a piston. Thomas, my good friend, you're looking perfectly polished today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled so loudly, his top hat wobbled. Thomas was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never chuckled so loudly that his top hat wobbled, and Sir Topham Hatt never called Thomas his good friend. I know, Thomas. Let's go to the Whispering Woods. It's one of my favorite spots. We have plenty of time before the party. All aboard! Now Thomas was even more puzzled. He wanted to ask about Sir Topham Hatt's new mustache and why he was acting so strangely. But Thomas didn't want to look silly. So he decided not to ask. Thomas pulled away from Maithwaite Station and chuffed towards the Whispering Woods. Thomas puffed up to the Whispering Woods. Edward was there. Edward had brought children to visit the woods. Then he was to take them to the party. Hello, Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look worried. Thomas was worried, but before he could explain, Sir Topham Hatt climbed down. Marvelous! What fun! Please, sir, uh, we can't stay long. The children mustn't be late for the party. Oh, party smarty, Thomas. We have plenty of time. You worry too much. And Sir Topham Hatt strode off. <laughs> Hello, children. Who'd like a game of hide-and-seek? Did Sir Topham Hatt say a game of hide-and-seek? Yes, he did. And Thomas's wheels wobbled with worry. <laughs> Sir Topham Hatt played hide-and-seek for a long time. He was very happy. So were the children. Edward was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never plays hide-and-seek. I know. And what's that on his face? A mustache. It just appeared. Today, Sir Topham Hatt doesn't seem like Sir Topham Hatt at all. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt came back. Thomas wanted to ask him if he was feeling all right, but he didn't want to look silly. Thomas knew that silly engines weren't really useful engines, so he didn't ask any questions. We must hurry now, sir. We'll be late. And so will the children. But Sir Topham Hatt wasn't worried. Don't hurry the children, Edward. Let them play. Edward was so surprised his boiler bubbled. Then Sir Topham Hatt jumped aboard Annie and waved to all the children. Thomas's wheels clickety-clacked. He puffed and he huffed along the track. He knew they were late for the party. Thomas stopped at the junction. Suddenly, Sir Topham Hatt jumped out of Annie and climbed up to the signal box. I won't be a moment, Thomas. Thomas was amazed. So was the signalman. Sir Topham Hatt never came into his signal box. Hello there. May I have a turn? Thomas looked up. He saw Sir Topham Hatt pull a lever. <coughs> then Thomas heard Gordon's whistle. Cinders and ashes. Here comes Gordon. Gordon had all the important visitors aboard the express. He was taking them to the party. With a clang and a clatter, the points changed. Gordon and the express were no longer on the express track. They were now on a branch line heading away from the party. Thomas heard Sir Topham Hatt whoop for joy. Hooray! Fizzling fireboxes. I must ask Sir Topham Hatt why he's being so strange. But when Sir Topham Hatt came down from the signal box, Thomas didn't say anything. He still didn't want to look silly. 
What fun! All aboard, Thomas! Thomas raced towards Maithwaite. Lady Hat would be waiting. They were very late. Thomas was worried. First, Sir Topham Hat had a mustache. Next, he wanted to play hide-and-seek with the children. Then he sent Gordon off the express line and away from the party. Hmm. Sir Topham Hat is acting very strangely indeed. Thomas puffed into Maithwaite. The station master was cross. Thomas, you're late. Sir Topham and Lady Hat had to go to the party and Bertie the bus. But Bertie hasn't arrived at the party. Neither have the children or the very important visitors. Thomas was puzzled. If Sir Topham Hat is on Bertie, then who's on board Annie? Just then, Thomas's passenger stepped down. Thomas knew he had to ask a question he hadn't asked before, even if he looked silly. Excuse me, Sir Topham. You don't quite seem yourself today. Is everything all right? Thomas's passenger beamed brightly. Yes, Thomas, but I'm not Sir Topham Hat. I'm Sir Loam Hat, Sir Topham's brother. Thomas was amazed. That explained everything. But he wished now that he had asked his question earlier. Now there was no time to waste if he wanted to be a really useful engine. Bertie must have broken down. We must find him right away. Sir Topham Hat's brother was very excited. Hooray! Another game of hide and seek! Now Thomas was stern. No, Sir Loam Hat. I have to work hard and quickly. Otherwise, your brother's party will be spoiled. Sir Loam boarded Annie, and Thomas puffed away. Thomas found Bertie the bus. Smoke billowed from his engine. Bertie looked very unhappy. So did Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Thomas, where have you been? Just then, Sir Topham Hatt's brother stepped down from Annie. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Oh, no, Loam. Have you been up to your old tricks again? Absolutely right, Topham. I've been having a wonderful time with Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt didn't think this was funny at all. Loam, you have caused confusion and delay. We must hurry. Thomas delivered Sir Topham Hat, his brother, and Lady Hat to the party just in time. The party looked grand, but Thomas couldn't stay. He had work to do. First, Thomas chuffed to the Whispering Woods. Edward was very happy to see Thomas. Go straight to the party with the children, Edward. Sir Topham Hat is waiting. It was his brother, Sir Loam, who was playing hide and seek. Next, Thomas found Gordon. Gordon was huffing and puffing as slowly as a snail down a rickety branch line. Ugh, the indignity. Hurry, Gordon, to the next express line. Race like a rocket to the party. That made Gordon very happy. At last, Thomas chuffed back to the party. Edward and Gordon were already there. What a wonderful party! And it was. Everyone was laughing. Then Thomas and his friends heard something very extraordinary. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled even louder than his brother. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Creaky Cranky. It was the spring holiday on Sodor. There was to be a party for the children at the Duke and Duchess's new summer house. All the engines were very excited and very busy. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. James and Henry were passing through. Good morning, James. Good morning, Henry. Where are you puffing to? I'm taking these straw bales to the summer house for the children to climb on. I'm taking wood to make a stage for the children's show and barrels of lemonade to drink. How wonderful. I'll see you later at the summer house. Good morning, Cranky. What's good about it? It's the Duke and Duchess's party day. Party smarty. I don't go to parties. I'm stuck here loading and unloading all day. I haven't had a moment to rest my hook. That load is for me. It's eggs for the children to paint. Hurry up, Cranky. 
You're creaky, Cranky. What's the matter? Are the eggs too heavy a load for you? <laughs> Cranky didn't like Thomas's joke. He didn't like being called creaky. No, they're not too heavy for me. They're light as fluff. <laughs> You're not strong enough to pull anything heavier than fluff, Tiny Thomas. That's why Henry and James have the heavy loads. Now Thomas didn't like Cranky's joke. Fizzling fireboxes! I'm as strong as any other engine! You're not as strong as me. I can lift much heavier loads than you could ever pull. Thomas really didn't like that. We'll see, Cranky. I have lots of time to deliver the eggs. First, I have to prove Cranky wrong. James has a heavy load. I'll go and find James. So Thomas steams sternly out of the docks. Thomas found James at the junction by the washdown. Hello, James. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of wooden barrels for you? You can stay here at the washdown. Then you'll be perfectly polished for the party. James thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So James was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of wood, and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off for the docks. Thomas chuffed back into the docks. You again. What are you doing with that wood? This flatbed is very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift it. Cranky looked at the flatbed of wood and barrels. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the wood. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed into the air. Thomas's boiler buzzed. Told you so. You're still creaky, Cranky. And you're still tiny, Thomas. That made Thomas very cross. I will prove Cranky wrong, and still have time to deliver the eggs. I'm sure Henry had an even heavier load. I'll go and find Henry. So Thomas steams stormily away. Thomas found Henry waiting by the coal hopper for his special coal. Hello, Henry. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of straw bales for you? Then you can wait here for your special coal. Henry thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So Henry was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of straw bales, and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was very heavy. Huffing and puffing, Thomas set off once more for the docks. Soon, Thomas puffed back into the docks. You again. Now, what are you doing with those straw bales? This flatbed is very, very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift this. Cranky looked at the flatbed of straw bales. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the straw. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed of straw into the air. Thomas's funnel fizzed. Told you so. You're still creaky, Cranky. And you're still tiny, Thomas. That made Thomas even crosser. More than ever, Thomas wanted to prove Creaky Cranky wrong. He had to find the heaviest thing he could. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Lift me, Cranky. Cranky looked at Thomas. He couldn't let Thomas win. Cranky's hook swung low over Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, and very, very slowly. Cranky raised Thomas high into the air. Bubbling boilers! Creaky Cranky is lifting me! Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and juddered. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh, no. Cranky's crane arm had broken, and it was all Thomas's fault. Thomas was stuck high in the sky and blowing in the breeze. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, what are you doing up there? 
I'm sorry, sir. I was... You are causing confusion and delay. The Duke and Duchess have no wood, straw bales, or eggs. Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken, and you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. The Duke and Duchess are waiting. Thomas felt very silly. Then Sir Topham Hatt looked at Cranky. And you're as silly as Thomas. Cranky crumpled. The shame to be as silly as a steamy. Soon, a workman had climbed up Cranky. Slowly and carefully, Thomas was lowered and landed with a jolt and a judder. Just as Spencer arrived. Dear, oh dear, Thomas, what a mess. Little engines can get into very big trouble. Thomas felt even sillier in front of Spencer. But he knew now that being strong was only good if you were also really useful. And he had to be really useful. Spencer, I need your help. You're very strong and can pull much heavier loads than me. Will you take the wood, the straw bales, and the eggs to the summer house for me, please? It's my fault that Cranky is broken. I must put everything right as quickly as I can. Hmm. Very well. Thank you. I'm sorry, Cranky. I know you're strong, stronger than me. I'll be back soon with the right parts to fix you. Then Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed out of the docks. Thomas wished like the wind all the way to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Cranky creaked, and now he's cracked. He needs new parts. You've come to the right place, my friend. Parts are plenty here. We'll have Cranky up and lifting in no time. Soon, Thomas's flatbed was loaded with new parts for Cranky. Thank you, Victor. Of course, my friend. Give Cranky my best! And Thomas puffed happily away. Thomas puffed into the docks with his heavy flatbed. Cranky was still looking crumpled. Here you are, Cranky. We'll have you fixed in no time. Thank you, Thomas. That's a heavy flatbed. You know, you're not tiny. And you're not creaky. Cranky laughed, <laughs> and that made Thomas <laughs> laugh too. <laughs> Buzzy Bees. It was a fine summer morning on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining, the birds sang. The flowers bloomed and Thomas clickety-clacked along the track to Brendam Docks. Thomas's good friend, Hero, was unloading at Brendam Docks. Good morning, Hero. Sir Topham Hatt tells me I have a special special today for Farmer Trotter. Good morning, my friend. Yes, you do. Look. Thomas gasped. Flatten my funnel. They look like small white wooden houses. Who lives in them? Bees, my good friend. Lots and lots of bees. Their houses are called hives. Inside the hives, the bees are very busy making honey. This made Thomas excited. Sir Topham Hatt always has honey on his crumpets. I'll puff as fast as I can to deliver the beehives to Farmer Trotter. Suddenly, Hero was stern. Thomas, chuff slowly and smoothly. Take the truck through the woods. Then the bees will rest. You have to look after bees very carefully. Don't worry, Hero. I will. They'll be happy with me. Hero smiled. Very well. I have to deliver these crates. Then I must pick up some flowers from Farmer Mako. I will visit the bees when I've finished. Hero steamed slowly away. Thomas was coupled up to the beehives. Off we go, bees. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. Ahead, he saw the track through the woods. The other track ran past a field full of flowers and bright sunshine. The field with flowers is much prettier than the woods. I'm sure the bees would like that better. So, 
Thomas didn't take the track through the wood as Hero had told him to. Thomas huffed happily along. Fuzzy bees are busy bees, and busy bees make honey. Fuzzy bees are happy bees when it's warm and sunny. Suddenly, there was a buzzing and a bizzing. Thomas applied his brakes. Bust my buffers, what's that? Thomas looked over to the field. His bees were everywhere. They buzzed busily, flying from flower to flower. Thomas was surprised. No. Come back, bees. Come back to your hives. The bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing in the field. Thomas tried again. Please come back, bees. We'll be late for Farmer Trotter. But still, the bees weren't listening to Thomas. Fizzling fireboxes. I can't take the beehives to Farmer Trotter empty. Then, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. The bees like flowers. I will chuff my hardest to Farmer McCall's and pick up the flat bed of flowers. Then, the bees will buzz around my flowers and back to their hives. So, Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed. Then, he steamed swiftly away. Thomas arrived at Farmer McColl's farm. He saw the flatbed of flowers. I'm sure Hero won't mind if I borrow his flowers. I'll bring them back as soon as the bees are in their hives again. And Thomas huffed happily back to the field. The bees were still buzzing busily from flower to flower in the field. Then, they saw Thomas's flowery flatbed. The buzzy bees left the field and buzzed all around Thomas. They flew into his funnel. They buzzed his boiler and whizzed his wheels. Trembling tracks? This flatbed of flowers wasn't a good idea. Go away, bees, please. Buzz into your hives and make honey. But the bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing. I must race like the wind. Then maybe the bees will be blown off my buffers and fly back to their hives. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. But the bees didn't mind the wind on their wings. They flew round Thomas like a buzzing cloud. Thomas chuffed and puffed to a siding. Very well, bees. If you won't leave me, I will leave you. Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed of flowers, and he clickety-clacked away down the track. Now the buzzy bees won't bother me. They're too busy making honey for Sir Topham Hatt's tea. Thomas chuffed to a junction. Hero was there. Thomas was surprised to see his friend. Hello, Hero. You look puzzled. I am, Thomas. Farmer McCall's flowers have disappeared, and you have still not delivered the bees to Farmer Trotter. He's waiting and worried. Thomas looked at his wise friend, Hero. He hadn't looked after the bees. He hadn't looked after their hives, and he hadn't taken the woodland track. But he had taken Hero's flowers. Hero, I have been very silly. I have been everything you told me not to be. But now, I will do everything you told me to do. Please wait for me here. I will bring you back your flowers. Thomas's wheels started to whir, and his boiler started to bubble. Thomas had a lot to do. Thomas puffed back to the flatbed of flowers. The bees were still buzzing, but Thomas didn't mind. Follow me, bees. I'll take you back to your hives. And Thomas weeshed away to the flatbed of beehives. Farmer Trotter is waiting for you, bees. You will like living on his farm.
Then, Thomas chuffed carefully away and took the track through the woods. The woods were deep and dark. The bees felt cold. It's time to go home, all you busy bees. It's time to make honey in the shade of the trees. And the busy bees buzzed into their hives. Farmer Trotter was waiting for Thomas. He was very pleased to see his new beehives. Thank you, Thomas. But why have you brought me all those flowers? They're not for you, Farmer Trotter. Hero is waiting for these. I must hurry. Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed down the track. Hero was waiting for Thomas. So, my good friend, here are my flowers. I'm sorry, Hero. You will be late, I know. But from these flowers, Farmer Trotter will have the best honey on Sodor. The two friends smiled. It had been a very busy, buzzy day. Playtime. All the engines on the island of Sodor are very happy. They are all pleased to work on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. There is always something new and exciting to look forward to. Like the day the famous singer Alicia Botti came to give a concert at the town hall. Thomas met Percy at the washdown. His boiler bubbled with pride. Hello, Percy. I have a very special special. I must meet Alicia Botti at the docks. Then I have to take her straight to the town hall for a grand concert. That's exciting. I have news, too. Someone else is arriving at the docks. Thomas was puzzled. Charlie, the new engine. Thomas hadn't heard about Charlie. What's so special about Charlie? He's the favorite engine of the mainland controller. Everyone says he is the most fun engine ever. Even more fun than you, Thomas. Percy chuffed cheerfully away. Bumpers and buffers. I don't think any engine is more fun than me. And Thomas puffed off to the docks, his wheels whirring with worry. Thomas collected Alicia Botti at the docks. Miss Botti looked very grand. I'm pleased to be traveling with you, Thomas. Thomas's pistons popped with pride. Then he saw Charlie. Charlie's smaller than me, and he certainly doesn't look more fun than me. Hello, are you Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm Charlie. I've heard a lot about you. You have? The engines on the mainland say you're even more fun than me. Thomas was surprised. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Charlie has a busy first day. Edward has broken down. Charlie must pick up Edward's freight cars of seats from the steamworks. Then he has to collect ice cream from the dairy and red carpet from Knapford Station. If Charlie needs help, I'm sure you will look after him. Yes, sir. Yippee! Want to come with me? Why? It'll be fun. Sorry, I'm busy. I heard you were a fun engine. Maybe you're not fun at all. Thomas didn't like being told he was no fun at all. I'll come with you to the steamworks, and then I'll take Miss Body to the town hall. I'm sure I have plenty of time. So Thomas steamed slowly towards the steamworks, and Charlie followed behind. Thomas chuffed carefully to a junction. Miss Body smiled sweetly from her passenger car. Charlie pulled alongside. This isn't fun. I'll show you fun. Yippee! <laughs> Thomas couldn't let Charlie be more fun than him. He pumped his pistons, bubbled his boiler, and fizzed his firebox. The race was on. Thomas and Charlie roared and raced. Their funnels were fiery. They were soon red-faced. Alicia Botti could not believe her eyes. My goodness me, this is a surprise. I thought Thomas was steady and slow. What thrills and what fun on the way to my show. The engines were laughing. The race was such fun. You're quick and you're speedy, but I'm number one. With a whoosh and a whoosh, the two engines pulled into the steamworks. Steady, boys. 
Who is your friend, Thomas? Charlie. He's new. I'm fun! And I'm Alicia Botti. <gasps> Miss Botti, it is an honor to have you visit our Steamworks. Kevin! Sorry, boss! And while Charlie was coupled up to Edward's flatbed, Miss Botti sang to the Steamworks. <laughs> then it was time to go. You are fun, Thomas. Let's go to the dairy. Thomas knew he should take Miss Botti straight to the town hall. But he didn't want Charlie to think he wasn't fun. I'm sure I still have time to get Miss Botti to the town hall. So Thomas and Charlie left for the dairy. Soon, the two engines came to a junction. Let's puff down there. We can't. That's a bumpy track. But it'll be fun. Thomas wanted to be fun, so he followed Charlie down the bumpy track. Thomas and Charlie bounced and bumped. Ooh. Alicia Botti oh. juddered and jumped. <laughs> and the couplings jiggered and jiggled looser and looser. At last, Thomas and Charlie pulled up to the dairy. That was fun! <laughs> And this is even more fun. We must go, Miss Body. You mustn't be late for the concert. Bye-bye. If you were a really fun engine, you would race me to Napford. Thomas knew he was late, but he wanted to be really fun. Just one last race, Charlie. Thomas and Charlie thundered and roared. Thomas thought he had never puffed so fast. I'm first. Let's race again. Then Gordon whooshed past. He was huffing grandly. He was taking Sir Topham Hatt to the town hall. Thomas gasped. <gasps> I'm late. I must wish like the wind to the town hall. Thomas pumped his pistons, and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late! I mustn't be late! Then there was trouble. Thomas didn't know that his couplings had unhooked. Thomas raced on to the town hall, alone. Thomas steamed to a stop. His cheeks were redder than James's shiny coat. Here I am, sir! Sir Topham Hatt looked hard at Thomas. Here you are, Thomas. But where are Annie and Clarabelle? And where is Miss Potty? Thomas felt terrible. He had been having fun when he should have been really useful. I'm sorry, sir. I've lost them. Sir Topham Hatt boomed. Then you had better go and find them. Thomas puffed to a junction. He had looked for Annie and Clarabelle, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Then Charlie chuffed up. He was on his way to the town hall. Hello, Charlie. I've lost Annie and Clarabelle and Miss Body. The couplings must have come loose on the bumpy track and snapped when we were racing. Don't worry, Thomas. I have a good idea. What's that? We'll have a race. Whoever finds Annie and Clarabelle first is the number one fun engine. Thomas was stern. He didn't think that was a good idea. No, Charlie. This isn't the time for fun. This is the time for being really useful. I have a very important job to do. And Thomas huffed away. Thomas chuffed carefully. He was very worried. Then Thomas heard singing. He smiled from buffer to buffer. That's Miss Body singing. Hooray! <laughs> Thomas found Miss Body by the bridge. He had never heard anything as beautiful as Miss Botti singing. Miss Botti, must go. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And Miss Botti cheerfully waved goodbye as the crowd clapped and cheered. Thomas puffed to the town hall with Annie and Clarabelle. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. At last, Thomas, you've made Miss Botti very late. Not at all, Bertram. Thomas has made me very happy. I've had the ride of my life. So many people to sing to, and such fun. 
That made Thomas smile, and so did his fun friend Charlie. Slippy Sodor. It was a very special day on the island of Sodor. The Mr. Bubbles clown show was coming to town. Mr. Bubbles was famous. He could blow the biggest bubbles ever seen. All the engines were happy and excited, except for Thomas. He had a cracked funnel and had to puff to the steamworks for repairs. At the steamworks, everything was huffing and puffing and steaming and wishing. Everything except Thomas. He waited sadly on the turntable for Victor to arrive. Thomas didn't like it when he needed repairs. It meant waiting inside and not having fun out on his branch line. Don't look so miserable, Thomas. We'll find you a nice spare funnel and have you out and about in no time. Kevin, let's see what we have for our good friend Thomas. Yes, boss. Coming right up. Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Oh, Kevin. Well, that won't do at all, my friend. This funnel is much too small. Kevin, let's try something a little larger. Yes, boss. Right away, boss. <laughs> Suffering Sodor, Kevin. What are you doing? Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Yes, we know, Kevin. We know. Try this one for size, Thomas. No, 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 no. This one is too large. We only have one more spare funnel, boss. I'll be back in two toots of a whistle. Let's hope it's a good fit, my friend, or you'll be here for quite a while. <sighs> here it is, Thomas. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. It was a slip of the hook. I know, Kevin. I know. Magnificent. A perfect fit. This funnel makes me feel silly. Not at all, my friend. It's... it's... splendid. It will help you puff very well until your old funnel is fixed. Now chuff along. I hear that Mr. Bubbles has a very special special for you at Brendam Docks. Thomas chuffed into Brendam. He was very unhappy. Mr. Bubbles was waiting. He was very happy to see Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Mr. Bubbles has a very important job for you, Thomas. This is my very special bubble liquid. It makes the biggest bubbles you have ever seen. I need it for my show this afternoon. Please take it to Knapford Station. So Thomas backed up slowly and carefully to the flatbed and was coupled up. Now you mustn't spill any of the liquid, Thomas. Puff slowly and carefully. Yes, sir. We'll meet you at Knapford. Then, James chuffed up. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like James laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away as quickly as he could. He forgot all about going slowly and carefully. Later, Thomas stopped at a crossing. He saw Gordon. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like Gordon laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Gordon as quickly as he could. He wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. But Thomas didn't notice. Sir Topham Hatt was driving Mr. Bubbles on the road. Then there was trouble. The car skidded and skated right into a muddy ditch. Thomas raced on. He stopped at a signal and saw Henry in a siding. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like Henry laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Henry as quickly as he could. He still wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles drove toward a bridge. 
Slow down, Thomas. You're spilling my bubble liquid. But Thomas didn't hear them. More bubble liquid splashed out and splashed onto the road. Sir Topham Hatt's car skidded and skated right into a haystack. But Thomas didn't notice. He went even faster. And so did Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles. Thomas didn't see them, but he did see a red signal. Thomas put on his brakes. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. Sir Topham Hatt's car skidded and skated right into a pond. But Thomas was too worried about his funny funnel to notice. He raced on towards Knapford. At last, Thomas puffed into Knapford, just as Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles arrived. Sir Topham Hatt was very cross. Thomas, you were going much too fast. The special bubble liquid splished and splashed out of the tank. And now the tank is empty. And it's almost time for my show to start. The children will be very disappointed. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. The only special bubble liquid left is at Brendam Docks. Now, there isn't time to pick it up before the show. Yes, there is. I'm sure I can puff to Brendam and back in time for your show. <laughs> very well, Thomas. But this time, you must be careful. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Soon, Thomas arrived back at Brendam Docks. A new tank of bubble liquid was loaded onto his flatbed, and Thomas puffed carefully away. Thomas saw Edward at a crossing. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't like Edward laughing at his funny funnel. But this time, Thomas didn't pump his pistons and race away from Edward as quickly as he could. He chuffed carefully on to Napford. Then, Thomas puffed past some children. The children saw his funny funnel. They were excited. They thought Thomas was going to be part of Mr. Bubbles' show. Thomas was surprised. He gave the children an extra loud toot. The children laughed even more. Thomas liked to see the children laughing. They're laughing at my funny funnel. It makes them happy. And that made Thomas happy. Thomas steamed back into Napford. The children cheered. Well done, Thomas. You haven't spilled one drop of my special bubble liquid. And you're just in time for my show. Later, the children clapped and cheered at the Mr. Bubbles Clown Show. They had never seen such big bubbles. Then the children spotted that Thomas's funny funnel looked just like Mr. Bubbles' hat. Thank you, Thomas, the funniest engine on Sodor. <laughs> Soon everyone was laughing, and Thomas most of all. <laughs> the Lion of Sodor. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sky was blue and the sun was shining brightly. Thomas was chuffing cheerfully to Brendam Docks. He felt very happy. Thomas had to collect a special special, but he didn't know what it was. Hello, Cranky. Is my special ready? Yes, it is. The mayor is waiting for it at Knapford. You must puff very carefully. Thomas was puzzled. What is it, Cranky? It's the Lion of Sodor. Cinders and ashes, how exciting. I promise to take extra special care of it. I've never carried a real live lion before. When Cranky heard this, he was surprised. No, Thomas, the Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas was too excited to listen to Cranky. He was already puffing proudly out of the docks. Thomas puffed happily along. 
Then he met Henry. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Bust my buffers. That's exciting. I only have sticky syrup to deliver. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I promised to take extra special care of my lion. I think he might really like sticky syrup. Could I have some for him, Henry? Of course. Thomas's engineer poured some sticky syrup into the lion's crate. Thank you, Henry. I have to hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Henry was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Thomas has made a mistake! Stop, Thomas! The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop. And he didn't listen. Next, Thomas met Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Flatten my funnel. How exciting. I only have to deliver fresh fish. I think my lion would really like fresh fish. May I have some for him, Edward? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some fresh fish into the lion's crate. Thank you, Edward. I must hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Edward was surprised. <gasps> Clattering coaches. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop. And he didn't listen. Then Thomas saw Toby. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Buff, my boiler, how exciting. I only have straw in my freight cars. I'm sure my lion would really like some soft straw to lie on. May I have some for him, Toby? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some soft straw into the lion's crate. Thank you, Toby. I really have to hurry. The mayor will be waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Toby was surprised. Uh-oh, trembling trucks. Stop, Thomas! The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. Thomas's pistons pumped and his wheels whirred. He couldn't wait to deliver his lion. He chuffed his hardest and raced on towards Knapford Station. At last, Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt was there. So were the other engines. I'm very excited, Thomas. This is a big day. The Lion of Sodor is here. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed, and he pulled away to join the other engines. The workman carefully opened the lion's crate. Then the engines gasped. The Lion of Sodor wasn't a real lion at all. It was a statue. And now it was covered in sticky syrup, fresh fish, and straw. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, this is a terrible mess. Gordon and James <laughs> laughed, and Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I thought I had a real lion in my crate. I wanted to take extra special care of it. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue. So Sir Topham Hatt told Thomas all about the Lion of Sodor, and the other engines listened carefully. So you see, Thomas, it was the most famous statue on Sodor. Then it broke. This is the shiny new statue we have been waiting for. The mayor is coming at tea time, and now look at it. I'll make sure it's clean, sir. I promise the Lion of Sodor will be shiny and new again in no time. Very well, Thomas. Thomas still felt very silly. Cheer up, Thomas. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue either. It all happened a long, long time ago. Not many engines remember that time. We tried to tell you, but you didn't stop. I'm sorry, Henry. I should have listened. Now I must hurry. I must get the Lion of Sodor cleaned right away. Why don't you take it to the washdown? 
This time, Thomas listened. What a good idea. Thank you, Henry. Thomas was coupled to the flatbed and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas took the lion of Sodor to the washdown. Soon, the sticky mess was washed off. That looks much better, Thomas. But now the statue isn't shiny. Take it to the steamworks, Thomas. They'll polish it until it sparkles and shines. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Edward. That's a very good idea. Victor will know just what to do. And Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the steamworks. Workmen polished the statue until it shined and sparkled, just as Edward had said. The Lion of Sodor looks much better now, Thomas. But it's nearly tea time. The mayor will soon be at Knapford, and it's a long way. Take the track by the windmill. That'll get you there in time. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Toby. That's a good idea. Thomas took the shortcut past the windmill. He huffed and puffed as fast as his pistons could pump towards Knapford. Children cheered and passengers waved as Thomas chuffed by. Everyone wanted to see the Lion of Sodor, and everyone wanted Thomas to stop. I can't stop now. I mustn't be late. The mayor will be at Knapford, and he won't wait. And Thomas whooshed on his way. Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford Station. The mayor had just arrived. He was delighted to see the new Lion of Sodor. The statue shined and sparkled in the sun. Well done, Thomas. This is the finest statue I've ever seen. And the cleanest! <laughs> Everyone cheered. And Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. Splish, splash, splosh. It had been raining and pouring on the island of Sodor. The engines were splattered and sploshed with mud. Thomas liked the rain. It splish-splashed on his boiler and pitter-pattered on his paintwork. Thomas and Rosie had biffed and bashed all day at the shunting yards. Now it was time to go. Come on, Rosie. I'll race you to Tidmouth Sheds. The two friends puffed along the tracks, straight through a very big puddle. Thomas and Rosie were splashed from footplate to fender in muddy rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Then, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Thomas reversed slowly. Then, he pumped his pistons. Here I come, Rosie. Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> It's a good game. Here I come, Thomas. Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> <laughs> Muddy water splattered everywhere. Then Sir Topham had arrived. He had some important news. Alicia Botty is to sing at a concert in the town hall. The concert will be followed by a grand tea. That's exciting. What fun! Thomas, you must go straight to the washdown. Then you are to collect Miss Botty and myself from Dryar Station. We will be waiting for you. Yes, sir. Rosie, you must collect Annie and Clarabelle and take them to Dryar for Thomas. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. See you later, Rosie. And Thomas and Rosie chuff quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the junction to the washdown. He saw a very big puddle on the other track. Charlie was waiting right by it. He was very muddy. Splashing Rosie was such good fun. I'm sure Charlie would like my game too. 
And I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. So, Thomas didn't take the track to the washdown. He took the track through the middle of the very big puddle. Here I come, Charlie! Splish, splash, splush! <laughs> Bust my buffers! That's a good game! Thomas huffed happily on. Hooray! This is fun! Now, Thomas wanted to find more puddles. He couldn't wait to play his game with other engines. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff left to the washdown. Then, he saw a very big puddle on the right track. Emily was waiting. Emily's muddy already. I'm sure she'd like my game. And I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. Here I come, Emily! Splash, splash, splash! <laughs> Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over Emily. And all over Emily's flower cars. Fizzling fire boxes! I have to take this flower to the bakery to make the cakes for Alicia Body's tea! Now Thomas has ruined it. Thomas didn't know he had splashed Emily's flower cars. This is fun! Splish, splash, splosh! I'll soon need a wash! <laughs> and Thomas chuffed on, chuckling. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff to the washdown. Then, he saw a very big puddle right beside James. James is muddy already. I'm sure he'd like my game. And I'm sure I have time for just one more puddle before the washdown. Here I come, James! Splish! Splash! Splosh! <laughs> and Thomas steamed away laughing. Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over James. And all over the ripe strawberries on his flatbed. Blistering boilers! These strawberries were for Alicia Botti's cakes! Now they're ruined! Thomas didn't know he had splashed James's strawberries. This is fun! Splish, splash, splosh! I'll soon need a wash! And Thomas puffed on happily. Thomas chuffed up to the next junction. Now it was getting late. I know there'll be a very big puddle along the track by the river. I'm sure I have time for one last puddle before the washdown. So Thomas took the left track that went along the river. Ahead of him was a very big puddle. My! This is the biggest puddle ever! Here I come! Splish! Splash! Splash! Then there was trouble. Muddy water flew high into the air and splooshed down all over Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hat. Thomas! Thomas screeched to a stop and reverse slowly. He saw that he had splish, splash, sploshed Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hat. Cinders and ashes! Look what you've done to Miss Botti. She's soaked. Also, Thomas, I hear from the dairy manager that you ruined the flour and strawberries for Miss Botti's grand tea. This is a disaster. Thomas felt terrible. He tried to puff forward, but he couldn't. Oh, no. The big puddle had put out his firebox. This game isn't fun anymore. It's all gone wrong. Then, Thomas heard Rosie's whistle. Rosie, please help me. I've splish splash sploshed into trouble. Oh, dear, Thomas. Of course I will. Don't worry. Rosie heaved and huffed Thomas onto dry tracks. With my dry coal, Thomas, your boiler will soon be bubbling. Thank you, Rosie. Now, I can't go to collect Sir Topham Hat and Alicia Body. Would you take my special for me? Of course I will. I'll go right away. Later, Thomas was once more steaming happily. He pulled up at a junction. There was a very big puddle on the right track. 
Look at that big puddle. It's perfect for splish splash sploshing. No, I'm not going to splish splash splosh anymore. I must make sure that Alicia Body's grand tea is on time. And Thomas puffed along the left track to the bakery and away from the big puddle. Thomas arrived just as James and Emily had delivered fresh strawberries and flour to the bakery. Your silly game means we'll be late for the concert. No, you won't. I'll wait here for the cakes. Then I'll deliver them. You can go to the washdown. Then you'll both be clean for the concert. Thank you, Thomas. Now I'll be shiny and best and gleam more than the rest. Thomas puffed in with the fresh strawberry cakes for the grand tea. You're just in time, Thomas. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I caused confusion and delay. Rosie puffed up to Thomas. I found another puddle. It's perfect for our game. We can play again. No, thank you, Rosie. I think I've done enough splish, splash, sploshing for one day.